there's my dad walking towards me about to help me out with this thing And now we have to get the plywood for uh, for the actual you know decks themselves because the actual shelf is wire. So now we have to pick up the plywood. That's another expense, but again, I'm just telling myself this is an investment into the fish room. And we actually have to get them to cut it to the right size. So here we are looking at plywood. I think we already picked out the ones we want. So as you can see, I'm just got this little cart. I'm getting ready to get them to cut it. Yeah, boy. We finished cutting it up. Let's go check out. You ready to go? Let's go. Ah, let's go. Passenger princess. I've got this huge, absolutely humongous rack. And then I've also got some boards over here. I'm gonna put these little pieces of plywood. These actually aren't little. They're actually like 71 and a half inches by two feet. So. These huge boards will go on the steel rack over here in order to distribute the weight more evenly. So we're gonna set that up and let me show you what the fish room looks like. Era. All right, have you guys on the wide angle uh, lens right now. This is literally taller than me. My height is right about here, and this thing is taller than me. We still have these to put on, but I'm not gonna do that until it's in position because why would you give yourself more weight to hold on to? So this is gonna stay somewhere on, like over there on the edge, somewhere. And then now is the time to start draining all my tanks because this is where we start moving tanks. Okay, so in my haste to build the fish rack, I forgot one very important thing, which is to actually varnish and stain the pieces of plywood that are gonna be the bottoms of each of my shelving uh, levels. And so what I have right here is I went to Lowe's. I've never done a single stain or varnish in my life. So uh, this is a recommendation from the Lowe's guy. He said that the mini wax premium oil based poly shades is going to be apparently the, the the thing to go and i told him it was going to be for a fish uh aquarium stand and it has to be like at least a little bit waterproof and he said it's not going to be waterproof it's going to be water resistant so uh try not to splash too much and then he also recommended a clean brush like but as you can see this is not a brand new brush because I spent all my money on the rack and these pieces of plywood. Who knew plywood was so expensive? This was like $65 each. That's crazy. So I'm going to pop that baby open and start painting. And then once it dries, we're going to have to flip it over and do the same thing. So I probably won't be doing the actual moving of everything until this dries. I can't believe I forgot it. I should have done this yesterday. This should have been like the first thing I did, but you live and you learn. Dude, this is like an art project. Feels like an art project. Ah, oh, okay, that looks kind of good, actually. 
Y'all, this is, this is like my first painting project, and this is like very, very cathartic. Take me back to like elementary school right now. I was always the guy that loved putting like all the different colors in the little wash bucket that they have for your paintbrushes because it always makes like this ugly brown and sometimes you can get it to like a nice bluish black color. Look at this color. Oh my God. Now I need to make sure that the edges here are good. This is way more fun than I anticipated. At first I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot to stain this. But I'm like, this might be the highlight of my project. Just relaxing, painting. I should sign up for a painting class. This is amazing. Look at the difference. Look at, look at that nice mahogany color compared to the white. Holy crap, this is amazing. Watch this. No, I'm doing art. I am an artist. And this is my canvas. Holy, wow, that is so fun. And then you lay the brush flat like this, and then you lift up slowly. And that way we get rid of all the brush marks. I'm currently eating lunch in the mid renovation fish room. We are waiting for the actual plywood that goes on these racks, these different levels to dry. So uh, it's gonna take a couple hours. Here's a little break in between. Because I was painting, I got all this like gross varnish on my hands. And so I'm eating with these gloves. As you can see, I still have the, uh, the brush in a little Ziploc bag so it doesn't dry out. Everything that I saw that I showed you in the other previous video has been cleared out. And all we're waiting for right now is these boards to dry and you're, they're in the garage and then it is time to move everything. I'm super excited, so time for lunch. Three hours later. All right, all right, everyone. It is the next day, the next evening. And what I did in the afternoon before was I stained and I varnished all four of these planks of wood. This is it's just this like nice, rich, red, brown, mahogany color. And it's so dark. It's gonna look so amazing in the fish room. There is one small thing that I did wrong that I would have done better if I had known. So let me talk to you a little bit about this. And again, this is my first time. You live and you learn, but you know, definitely if you plan on doing this thing, doing the same thing, don't make the same mistake that I did. So let's get into that. So if you take a look at the edges here, the stain seems to have kind of melted in or like kind of bled through. And what happened, what I think happened, was I was trying to paint the sides of all of these, right? The edges, just to give them a little bit more color on the edges. But the issue was the way I did it was completely wrong, right? I stacked all four of these together in like a four layer thing. And I just use my brush and try to just go through like that. The issue with that is the brush has too much of the varnish and it will stain. And in fact, this morning when I tried to open this all up, the issue was that they were kind of stuck together. The varnish had like semi hardened and it was like this sticky glueish glue substance that would just stick all four of these boards together and I had to pry them out. And so that's why they're kind of by themselves, all four of them right now. So in the future, if I were to ever do this again, I would either kind of do the edges first so I could clean up and then do them one at a time. Definitely take your time at this step so you don't end up with this stuff. Uh, you can see, yeah, I can kind of use my nails. If you guys take a look here, I can use my nails and remove some of that varnish so it's not the end of the world but essentially like this is a this is something that might just be like a cosmetic issue right it's not going to really hurt the fish room in any way but again like you know you spend all this time doing all this project might not take the extra time to do them one at a time or to paint them with a little bit more care next time so again screwed up this time with the edges but they're not going to hurt the fish room in any way and i'm just going to roll with what i have Okay, so I've got the four boards, and it's the moment of truth to see if 
I did the measurements correctly. Measure twice, cut once. I didn't do the cutting and I only measured once. So, seven inches and uh, I think like seven eighths. 71 inches and seven eighths across and then 24 inches diagonal, uh, deep. So let's see, let's see if this will work out. All right, here we go. I like this one. Slowly put it in. One. Is it gonna fit, sir? Oh, okay. Oh, dude, this fits perfect. Oh, dude, this is literally perfect fit. Oh my god. It's like the Goldilocks zone of Aquarius. Whew. Man. Okay. Now to do this like four extra times. Yo. And I don't even think the well maybe when, when the fish when the fish tanks are on. It'll press down on the thing, but whoa! This tank looks nice, man. Or this stand looks nice. Okay. All right. This is good. This is so good. This is so good. This is so good. This is a very flattering angle of me. <laughs> Who do you think? I just want to do a fit test, and it seems like everything works really well, so we're good. When we do move these, when we do move the rack, I'll probably take off these planks, so it's easier to move. All right, so this is beautiful. It's a nice little mahogany color. All right, I have my headlamp on. Here's a nice overview of what this mahogany. All right, y'all. So I went ahead and drained all three of my tanks. This place is empty now. So what I have to do now is take this stuff out, drain every, or like put everything away, and then move this over to where it was so then I can put this back on where everything is here. So it's gonna be a lot of work. Um, once I'm done, I'll check back in. I think what's really cool when removing this stuff is you kind of see that this has kind of grown into the cinder blocks. So I have to actually peel all these roots off in order to get the pothos out. So I removed all of the racks. Fish tanks are still there, not filled up. Now is the time to clean this place up and then move the new rack into place. This is a very, very sweaty and hot endeavor and the light is flickering now. So a lot of things have to go into place for this and I gotta work quick because I don't want these tanks to be out of water for too long. Finally, after months of planning, I have them on the racks now. The water is slowly filling back up, courtesy of this ingenious siphon. It's really on a chair, on an upside down bucket, on a fifth, five gallon carboy. How precarious is that? Anyways, Gonna fill that up, hook up all the filters. I've been actually spraying, you can see the, the condensation on those leaves. I've been spraying them periodically so that nothing dries out. Um, I hope these shrimp, look at this bamboo shrimp. Okay, everything's good. Got plenty of shrimp down there. They're all doing well. Oh man, this is gonna be amazing. This is amazing. Whew. And this is, you know, let me see if I can walk backwards a little bit. Whew. Zoom out, look at that. 
holy crap, everything is amazing. This is all worth it. Took the tanks off that rack, and then I removed all of the, uh, the, the cinder blocks, the wood planks, and then that top one, I actually have not put that in the last block. It's over there. Cause I realized when I put it in, it would block all the light from the top and it was super dark. And since I've got nothing up there yet, you know, we don't have to worry about that. But I also put in the other tanks, you know, there's some clean ones, you can set them up in a later video. Ho oh, ho, all right, everyone. So this looks absolutely amazing. It's about 1 a.m. again. This whole process took about three, four days of like work, right? It's not just like, oh, you work for an hour and every now and then, oh my God, look, actually, before I start talking again, look at the Hillstream loach, it's coming off right there, right there. Anyways, this whole process took like three, four days, you know, just to have everything, everyone's, everything's super lively. I just put all the new water back in and yeah, like the shrimp are absolutely, Loving it. There's a bunch of mulm everywhere because the water kind of, you know, every time you put the new water in, it kind of splashes up a little bit, but that's totally fine. I'm not too worried about that. It'll clear up super quickly. And look at this tank. Now, this was my low tech dirted tank. And as you can tell, I have my CO2 running over there um, for now. And then once I actually get set up with the actual CO2 tank, which I wanted to do a, uh, actually, I'm not gonna tell you what I wanna do yet, but it's gonna be a really good tank. I, get, I just gotta wait for the plants to come in. And then of course, this is the OG one on the very bottom here. You can tell that it's a little more cloudy than the others. I actually don't really understand what's going on with this tank. I have a filter in the back, cleaned it up. Everything's like fine, but every time I add new water in here, it just gets really cloudy, so. Um, I might have to tear this down, which is fine because I've been meaning to tear this down anyways. It's my blue dream tank. But yeah, guys, this is the new Avatar Aquatics fish rack. I'm so excited. Look at that thing. Look at, look at that, look at that thing. Oh my God. But essentially once, you know, the other stuff come in and everything, we're gonna fill this whole rack up. It's gonna be amazing. Holy crap, it's gonna be beautiful. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed making this fish room renovation. I'm so happy that I did this and honestly, it just looks amazing. I, I can't wait to start doing live streams and all sorts of cool stuff in front of these tanks. And again, this is going to be an ever evolving concept. I'm gonna add more tanks every time I add more tanks. I obviously will have to like restructure everything and it's going to be amazing. I have so many different plans for this rack. It's going to be great. So anyways, thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.